Carmen. I'm your research librarian, and I'm here to take you through the basics of the library today. At the end of this training, you will receive my contact details and a bit of other guidance, but I would like to introduce you to the magic portal, which is otherwise known as the library. You're going to find the library very important during your course of studies, and you're going to be using it a lot, and you will also be making use of me, I'm sure. So how do you get to the databases? You go onto the university's website, as you see at the top, Click on accept down here, otherwise this thing's going to keep popping up and annoying you. You're going to click on library. And this is the library's homepage. So I'm going to take you through all the basics. What do you see on the homepage? In the top left is department, and you'll see department home is exactly the page where you are now. There's information on the library hours, at the moment with COVID, we have special hours. There's some basic information about the library. The how do I is basic information on how do I pay a fine? How can I renew my books from home? You can do this from home twice before your books need to be in this library in a physical sense, but you can also email me instead of struggling to go there and doing it yourself. The events tab is events hosted by the library. We have special things like book launches, discussions, and so on, but obviously due to COVID, nothing is happening at the moment. Then we have the library blog where the librarians post short tidbits of information that could also help and guide and lead you. Now, as I said, this was the library homepage, the department home. If you scroll down, you will see this. This is the library discovery service, all right? You can search on it, you can search on it for titles. I refer to this as the library Google, okay? You are post-grad students, so I prefer not to go the basic route because it will frustrate you. You want to go directly to the source without clicking here, then everywhere and confusing yourself. You are welcome to use this, but I don't, but I'll show you later on what exactly we're going to do. You will also note on this web page, as I take you through, there's a lot of repetition, different ways to get to the same links. The catalog, which is the Corfsi Cut, the electronic journals, we even have electronic books, and the repository is Corfsi Scholar, which is our institutional repository, where all masters and doctorate research is uploaded as, as well as articles written by staff on this campus. So if I click on the next link, resources, again, catalog, remember I told you there was a lot of repetition. Electronic resources is the main feature you're going to be using. It's the databases. Ignore off-campus access, I'll tell you now, now why. LibGuides is also a link to us, your librarians, also with plenty of information on. Let me click LibGuides and show you. So on the LibGuides, you have links to different departments, different information, some photos of some librarians. We have a lot of new librarians now. We're very excited to have them with us, and we're hoping to upload their photos soon. So you'll find all these information on the LibGuides. Then Corsi Scholar, again, as I told you, was the institutional repository question that's often asked from us uh, research librarians is we need an example of how a thesis should look. So there you would go find all our theses are digitized and they're uploaded there. So I will take you through that and you will see how to locate thesis in your field. Exam papers, you log in with your own student number. Nobody else can log in with their student number and get you your old exam papers. Okay, you can see what you are registered for. New acquisitions is a list of all the new material the library has purchased to help you. We are going the e-route, obviously, to make it much easier for everybody. So, but you can go and check what is there if you're nosy like me. Then we have library services. Ask a Librarian is a link we have. If you go to EBSCOhost, now, now you'll see there's an Ask a Librarian. 
if you're looking for something and you can't find it, you click that, there's an online form, you fill it in, you submit, and it is routed to the correct librarian. Okay. Now, please bear in mind, I'll show you again when we get to EBSCO host. If you click Ask a Librarian from EBSCO host, complete the entire form. Please copy and paste the details of the source you're looking for as it's not connected automatically, it's not uploaded automatically to the form. So the other day I received 20 emails from one student, please find the source for me. And I had to mail them back and say, please tell me what source. Okay, so make sure you complete the form. On the other hand, I can ask you, just mail me straight, you will get my contact details at the end of the session. It just makes it easier when I'm out of office, there's an auto reply to say I'm not there, contact so and so to assist you. All right. Then interlibrary loans is an agreement we have between all higher education institutions in South Africa. And that also goes hand in hand with the letter of introduction. Again, the letter of introduction is the same thing. It's an agreement between all higher, institu higher education institutions in South Africa. If you need a source that we don't have, we can borrow it from another university or an institution and then you can loan it for a period. All right. The letter of introduction, again, on the other hand, is a form you complete. Say you are not based full-time in Bloemfontein where the main campus is and you are in Gauteng. You can fill in that form and you can request on that form, the letter of introduction, for access to two other institutional libraries in the area where you live. So maybe if you were in Gauteng, you would like access to UNISA and to WITS. You fill in the form, we send them a letter, you are issued with a library card. Sometimes that comes at a small fee because it's administration costs for the card. And you are allowed to go to that university, use their resources, use their facilities at the library, okay? It does not allow you to use the electronic resources because those are licensed per institution, but you have all the resources at your fingertips over here at the UFS, but you are welcome then to go and sit and work in the library and even borrow their books. Copyright is basic information on copyright. We all know about copyright fair use of information. So if you want to know more about copyright, you can go and read there. The online book ordering you will not use, that is your faculty. They use that to order books via the library for purchasing. The renew items is like I told you, you can renew your library material from home or you can just send me an email. Research. We have research support, that's the section I work in. We are two post-grad research librarians, the faculties are divided amongst us. And you will find links to us there, as well as on the lip guides, and helpful research information. Okay, again, there we have open access. I told you there was a lot of repetition. So the open access principle is based on open use of information, making it accessible to everybody all over Africa and everywhere else in the world. So when one publishes open access, you, the user of the information, the consumer of the information, gets free access to research information. But somebody has to carry the cost for this, so that's normally covered by your institution or depending on who you published through what the agreement was. But that's the principle of open access in a nutshell, okay? Then we have the Archive for Contemporary Affairs, which is based on campus, and that is historical documents and so forth, okay? It is a, like a repository. You could come in there by appointment. You can contact them. They can find information for you. This would probably be applicable to political science in the humanities, maybe not to the other faculties as much, but you have the archive. Then SA Media, you will see when we go to the electronic databases, it is a newspaper clipping service. It used to be a product of this university library, but we sold it to Sabinet. I'm going to show you Nana. That again would be helpful maybe in political governance or wherever, because all the national newspapers in South Africa are collected on a weekly basis. They are scanned for articles. The articles are scanned and, up, scanned and uploaded, so you can go and look at significant 
current events and past events that have happened. I will show you how to search there. Training sessions are not cast in stone, okay? We try and put a preliminary program up there as well as on the lip guides, but it's flexible. If you are coming to campus and you feel you would like hands-on training, you contact us beforehand, you make a booking and say, look, I'm on campus that day. Could you possibly see me for a bit of hands-on training? You can come in one or two. So it's flexible. Then obviously because you are post-grad students, first-year training is not going to apply to you. That's normally the UFS 101 program. And the other librarians, the undergraduate librarians, will then be facilitating that training. Then we have different branch libraries. I am stationed at the main library on the sixth floor in the postgrad research unit. We have the Frick Scott Library, which is the medical library. We have a music library, which is also on the main campus. Then we have the TK Mopeli Library, which is on the Kwakwa campus. And we have the Neville Alexander on South Campus. Contact details, there are ways to contact us. At the end of this session, you will receive my contact details. Off campus, as I said, I'm going to show you now now. And then we have archives. Again, there's another link to the archive for contemporary affairs. So I'm now going to take you through the different databases. But before we do that, I want to show you a brief video on why it is important rather to use the registered databases. So that is the importance of using the databases and not just Google, because just look what could happen if you just went to Google Roots. How much results did they find? Something like 56,000. So we want to be specific and go to the source. So I'm going to take you through the resources one by one now. Yeah, we have the catalog called the Corsi Cut. It is a catalog of all physical resources available to you in the library. You can search my keyword, maybe you know author of something in your field. You can select author and put in the author's surname. Maybe you want to see if we have a specific book so you can click on title. I'm going to go and do a quick keyword search for you. I prefer to go to the databases and then select my material from there, but there's nothing stopping you from using this. So keyword is selected. And remember I said you're postgrad students, so don't struggle with the basics. Everywhere you search, go to advanced. It's just, it gives you so much more features. Otherwise, it's like going on Google and typing in milk. So here we can go. I'm going to use a very generic example and say search engine. You can do it lowercase or capital. You can go and select the field wanted in the author, the title, the subject. For the purpose of this, I'm just going to leave it to search engine, any field. Then we have the Boolean operators for those who don't know. So it's the and, and not, or the or. So say we want information on search engine, 
and Google. So we leave it to Anne. Maybe we want information on search engines, but nothing on Google. So then we're going to tell it and not Google. Maybe we want information on one or the other, so you would put an or in between. But I'm going to use these both in the same sentence and say search engine Google. Now location, you're going to select a drop down and you can leave it to any or main library. I'm going to go main library for now. You could search it in whatever order. We're going to search for printed material. In other words, the physical printed book. I do not use this. You could maybe, if you're going to go to the archival route, you can add archival there. If you want to look on maps on search engines, otherwise, who would want to use a map to find a search engine? Just Google it. All right. So I don't use this to search for electronic material. I use the databases. So you can go and select which language you want it in. I'm going to leave it to any, but maybe you speak Dutch or Flemish and you want to take a chance and check. Now here you can specify a date range. Let's say we want to look at the last 10 years. All right. Publish, uh, I don't think you would ever use that because you're not going to know who published the book until you see it in front of you. It could be Taylor and Francis, it could be Rutledge, it could be Sage. So my personal opinion, that's overkill. All right. But now we've typed in our search terms and we're going to submit. So this is what we have found. It found exactly two, so this was a very narrow search, and judging by the both of them, it's a newer and an older edition. So what do you see here? Let's look at the top one. There's the title. It tells you it's in the main library. It tells you there's the shelf number. And over there, it tells you it's out, and some naughty student borrowed it, and it was due back in 2019, so we will have to follow that up and then build the student for the book. Okay, naughty, naughty student. If you look at the second copy and you look at the date, you'll see when I show you the PowerPoint just now. The 2nd November 2021 means a staff member has this book. They get to borrow it because they use it in their classes, so they get to borrow it a bit longer. But if you do need a book that is out, we can recall the book. Okay. But over here, I would urge you then to send me an email and say, look, I'm looking for this book that's out. I have ways and means of getting hold of electronic books. Okay. So very straightforward. The other thing I like when I do use, because I use Google Chrome for searching, it works the best with the library systems. I like to open my things in new tabs, and then you can close the ones you're busy with. Because the minute you use Coffee course, the course catch and you click back at times out. So let's see what this tells us. Open link in new tab. Let me look at the tab. Everything from my terms that I asked you to search, it picks up at bold and it puts it in red. Okay. So that is the course cut in a nutshell. If you go down, you can save this if you've signed into your library record. You can return to list which is probably could also work instead of hitting the back button. You can modify your search. You can say you want more material in the same vein. So I use the Corsica to check if we have a book. In the same breath, you will see Nana when we go to EBSCO. If it's electronic book, in the center there will be a link to connect to the electronic book. I will show you soon how that works. So there you have the coffee cut, and I'm closing the tab. Electronic resources is the big one you're going to use, which refers back to our milk video of earlier. This is where you're going to do all your searching. Like I said, a lot of repetition to make it easy for you to get wherever you need to be. The A to Z database list is where we're going now. It's where all our databases are that we use to specifically search in a specific direction, all right. The discovery service you see there, and this window down here, and remember on the department homepage I was talking about the library Google, is more or less the same thing as the library Google. What I like about this discovery service, which I would then also maybe use on the homepage, is if I find a specific, specific name of an article somewhere and I want to find if we can find it, I'm going to put it in a click title and search it. If we have it, it will take you to a link where the article is. All right. 
Let's go to the database list. A to Z database list, and we are now going to do searches. So I was telling you about the off-campus login, all right? So what happens if you're from home, 10 to 1 somewhere along the line, you are now suddenly going to get a pop-up window to log into Microsoft. It was a new thing that happened recently. To log in there, you are going to put in your student number at ufs.ac.za and your Blackboard password. That's going to be your first logging, most probably it's going to ask you. The second one it's going to ask you, you will see when I log in, it's going to be your normal Blackboard password. Okay, so that would be your student number and the Blackboard password. It won't be at UFS, it'll just be your student number. So we have all these databases listed from A to Z, and there's a couple of numbered ones, or they were in the past. And they ranged alphabetically. If you know where you're going, you click on the letter of the alphabet, it's going to take you there. The name of the search engine, the database is there, and it tells you what's in there. Okay. The first thing I'm going to show you is EBSCO host. They are also our aggregate or our content provider. That's why everything's going to look like EBSCO to you if you do the discovery service because they drive that service for us. But there are different databases, okay. And if you can work EBSCO host, you can work all of them. I think, EBSCO, personally, in my opinion, EBSCO host is the most difficult one. Now, I always tell the students, think of EBSCO host as a toolbox. You've got to go to the toolbox, open the toolbox, tell it which tools you want to use, and then tell it what to do with the tools. EBSCO host is a toolbox with a lot of different databases or tools inside. You're going to select your tools. And why I'm telling you this now is because I know academic search is one of the EBSCO tools in the toolbox. Okay. Africa wide is in that toolbox. So let's go to EBSCO host. You click on E. There you have EBSCO host. Remember the host, because I'm going to show you now. EBSCO host. Remember, I was warning you about that. It's your student number at ufs.ac.za. I am lucky. Well, I'm going to put in my email address. And your password. And that was the first hurdle of authentication. Okay, so this opens. And remember I said remember host. There's the library Google again. There's the database we're going to use. If you're in medical or nursing, you can click on any one of the others. You're going to see this full text finder as we do our search. So just go to EBSCO host web. So EBSCO host, the toolbox opens and you are confronted by all these tools. We're just going to deselect all for now because we're not going to use all of them depending on the field you're in. Now we're going to tell it what tools to use. Because I am the research librarian for humanities and national agricultural sciences, I'm going to do the humanities one for now. So academic search ultimate always use it. It's multidisciplinary. It applies to humanities and any other subject. Okay. We're in Africa, so let's add African information. The name is self-explanatory. Click Africa wide. We're not into med medicine at this stage. If you're a psychology student, you could select the psych. I'm going to base this on political governance this search. So Applied science and technology, there's not much that goes for that in as far as political governance is concerned. Art, definitely not. So you can read these explanations, okay? We're not going to add business source right now because I think the minute anybody has political governance and business, they think Gupta or something because the government's been run as a business. 
we're going to tell her to look at ebooks in the EBSCO host collection. We're not in education, so we're not going to click education. But I want to urge you to remember some subjects overlap because there is now a governance field in education. That's school governance bodies and so on. So if you're an education student, click on education source. E-journals, we're going to find these anyway because this is going to take you to journal articles and books. So I'm not going to select that right now. Eric is another education resource. Green file, the name is self-explanatory. That would be anything related to nature. So natural and cultural sciences would probably select green file then. We're not into nursing at this stage or any health things. And obviously humanities would be one of the ones we're using. You can tell her to check the Corsi cat in your search. You can include Corsi Scholar, the institutional repository, which I'll be showing you now. now. If you want legal articles, you can include legal source. Master file is the other multidisciplinary one. There's a master file reference ebook collection, so those would be things like encyclopedias and so on. I'm not going to do it right now. Open dissertations are probably overseas, although American dissertations. We're going to put it in for now. Philosophy, you decide. Obviously, political science. Maybe there's some sociology involved at human interaction with certain things. I'm not going to look at that now. Well, there's political sociology, so let's add it then. When you're done, you click on continue. Now, I don't know if you noticed that the top of the page was also continue. I know some people read magazines from the back to front. Maybe you wanted to read this list from the bottom to the top. You can click on either one. Don't stress about it. So when you've selected your tools, you tell it continue. Now we're going to tell it what to do with the tools. Now remember I said please use advanced search. So you click advanced search. And this is your search box. Now most databases including EBSCOhost has a sign in or a register feature at the top. It's free to create a profile for yourself, please. And because we've now logged in, you see it picks us up as University of the Free State. So if you're going to do a search, sign in, you have more functionality. I'm not going to do it right now. With EBSCOhost, the case of signing in means if you signed in, you can save a search. You can set up TOC alerts to, for EBSCO to alert you if there's a new article in your field. You can create folders within your thing and save your searches by date, topic, whatever. You can, like I said, you can save a search. What I'm telling you that is maybe you've done a search and suddenly your husband or your wife phoned you and said you have to go ASAP, there's trouble at school or go, we need bread and milk, otherwise we're going to go hungry tonight. Um, the minute you close this window, your search is gone, you have to start from scratch. Whereas if you had created that profile and you saved your search, you can go back to it later and continue. All right, so remember that it's these little things that help. Now we're going to construct a search. So let's go I am thumb sucking a subject out of my fingers here. It's kind of hard teaching a class with nobody in front of you. Um, so you can add subjects there. And remember I said the and or not. There you have them. There's the fields like you saw in the Kofsi cut. Tell it to check wherever. And you can do this 500 times over, I think these boxes open up. And I don't know about you, but I hate a busy screen. So I would recommend structuring your search as follows. Put your first term in a bracket. Oh, and look at the lovely typing error. One set of brackets equals one line. Space plus space, next bracket, your next term. So that means you now have two lines in one. Maybe then you can add another one. Maybe not. It depends on you. 
Now, if you think in terms of sense, sentence structuring, it can be governing in contemporary times, contemporary governance and policies and issues. So if you look at the word governance, in the example I gave you, there's different governing, governance. We wanted to look at anything with the word governance in it. So we put the main part of the word before the spelling starts varying and you put a star. That's telling it, look at all the different spellings. Okay. Policy, policy. So policy, you would obviously do the same thing if you think in terms of spelling. You can tell it you want exactly the term issues, otherwise it could look at things like issuing or whatever, or policies and issues. So you put that in inverted commas, telling it you want it exactly that way. That's what the inverted comma means. Or you can tell it between your words, you want whatever the word, the format of policy is and the word issues to be within close proximity, proximity to one another. So you would put an N for near, and a four or a five or a six. So you want the word policy and issues within four or five or six or two or three words from one another in the sentence. So the N4 means near, that's your proximity search. That's your spelling. So once you've selected, if put in your search terms, you're going to tell it to search. So bear in mind, again, the example we showed you of the milk. <laughs> you know what it is you're studying. You can think of what related search terms there are. If you are not sure, go do a normal Google search, okay? I can tell you, you know it's frowned upon if you cite Wikipedia, but there's nothing wrong with reading background information on whatever it is you're researching. And Wikipedia at the end has traceable references. So don't cite the Wikipedia article, rather go to the reference list at the bottom, go trace those references there are. There's a Wikipedia project going on one hash, one lib, one ref. Okay, what happens is they've got librarians all over the country and the world, they're trying to go and get involved on the Wikipedia project. And they go and search citable sources and they add them to the reference list, which makes an article on Wikipedia more credible in the end. But like I said, don't cite Wikipedia, go to the bottom and look at the reference list. So we've said, we've put in our search terms, we've selected our fields. Look, there's a create alert, which you would use when you are signed in. And we say search or you press enter. I don't bother with this. You could go and refine it even more. But let's do this for now. We say search. And with those funny terms I used, I only found three examples. All right. So look at the first one. It's an academic journal. That's 2002. So maybe I picked a bad example. There's a 2004. There's a 2016. And that's a dissertation. So what you would do if you do a search and there's hundreds and thousands of them, the first thing you do is you go to the date range to refine it. You can either use the slider or you can type in the last 10, the last 5, the last 20 years and it looks for you within that date range and it refines your search. So when you've done that search, all the things you selected, you see these are the databases you used. Journals, academic journals is exactly the same thing. It's a lot of repetition. Even all the sources on you are academic by nature. So don't worry about you seeing magazines there. These things are all academic, all right. So this is straightforward. If you look at the first one, there is the PDF. There is a full text finder. Look, there's the interlibrary loans form over here again. If you, we don't have access to it, mail me, please. I will search for it, and if I can't find it, I will refer you to Interlibrary Loans. I'll give you the link. The same thing with the Oscar Librarian. I'm just going to open it in a new window quickly for you to see, in a new tab. So this is the second login that you would come across, your student number and your Blackboard password. So at some stage, this will be asking you for that. And there is your form. The one that I asked you please to copy and paste the details in there. Once you're done, you submit and it will be routed to me. But again, save yourself the trouble. Just mail me directly. You will have my contact details. So looking at the second one, there's a PDF. Looking at this one, you see there's no PDF. 
There's Ask a Librarian, and you can check it on the Corsi code. Now, I want to tell you, if you look at the full text finder, this is the code word for where the PDF somewhere else to click until you get there. But it's very straightforward. So open your PDF. Read it, save it, whatever works for you. All right. There's your PDF. When referencing these sources, reference it. This is my hint to you. Reference it as if you would as if you had the physical paper in front of you. Okay. You will find all the details you need there anyway. They tell you it's from Public Administration 82, number 1, 2004. There's the page numbers. Don't put the URL there because if you're going to use the EBSCO URL, I just want to find it for you quickly, it could turn into a very long story cluttering up your screen and frustrating everybody no end, and that's not opening, so let's go. But you will see a URL. This is a scanned version of a journal. So reference it as if you had the physical thing in your hand. So if you didn't see PDF full text, you didn't see that, you didn't see that, you copy and paste it in a mail and you send it to me, say, please, I was looking for this. Can you help me find it? And that is the quirks of EBSCO host. There it opened. So look at that, if you look at, look at that very long URL, you don't want to do that. Anybody else clicks on that, they're not gonna get access to that because you have signed in, so you're the only one that's gonna have access to that anyway. Look at the physical thing, reference it. Ebook Central is another place where you can go and find books. So you go in there, you can type the title of a book in there, you can try it by a keyword and see what pops up. I'm going to go wide now and just put political governance in there. And press enter or click on search. Again, look, there's a sign in feature. So it found this book. You can read it on a line. It allows you to download a certain percentage of pages. It wants you to sign in, obviously. Okay, do not worry about that. You will be signed in, obviously. I am incognito at the moment, but you should get access to the book. Okay, eBook Central. At the ease, like I said, there's lots of them. You can go through them one by one. Let's go to S. So, we're going to click OK there to save ourselves this frustration. SA Media is the newspaper clipping service I showed you, which I'm about to show you now. It was bought by Sabinet, who is also SAE Publications. So let's go and search for something on the newspaper clippings. We click on SAE. Waiting, waiting, waiting. It's a rainy day in Bloemfontein, so we never know what could be delaying everything. We're still waiting for SA Media. While that's opening, I'm going to go to the next one in the meanwhile, which would be the SAE Publications, the African Journals. Again here, we're on campus, it's authenticated us. There you could register for your free profile. We're going to go to advanced search. And over here again, we're going to enter search terms. If you look at this one to the right, there's a search guide how you can do specific things using the and or not, or you can go the route of adding the more terms over there. So let's say... Another thumb sucking subject here. And the joke of the day as it is at the moment, we're going to use the parliament and everything else. You're going to select your date range. So you can custom or do your last date. Maybe you want to look at January, 
Okay, let's do the custom one over there. We're going to go January 2010 to January 2021. And you select your databases over here. We're going to tell you to look in Social Science and Humanities, in the African Journal Archive, in the Open Access. You can add any of those. If you really want to do that, you do that and you say search. Here's your filters you've applied to it, so you can go and change them. It found 31 articles. It tells you that one it found in open access. So you can click over there for an abstract to see more about what the article is about. If that's what you want, there's a PDF. Open it, read it, save it, print it. You see, all of these articles are through all the, real, the open access ones to the top. As easy as that. So our good friend SA Media has opened in the meanwhile, and this is the one where I told you we searched the newspaper clippings. So let's go Zondo Commission maybe, the buzzword at the moment. And we can add another thing there, we can add there. We're just gonna go very basic and tell it do the Zondo Commission, exact word or phrase. If you know a title of an article that was in the newspaper, you type it in there. If you know the newspaper, you can select it there. Otherwise, you're just going to tell it, let's search maybe from January last year. From the 1st of January last year to today's date. And when we're done, we tell it search. It found 3,842 results. All right. You can go and refine your search. You can start from scratch. So let's go have a look. It was a cartoon of the Zondo Commission in the Citizen on the 21st of July. So let's open it in a new tab so we can see what it's about. So there's the information and there's the scan PDF. So this is going to open the scan PDF and you will have the information of the newspaper on there as well, depending on what your research field is and what it is you've searched. But you will have everything you need for your referencing right there. And that was from the Citizen 21 July 2020 and it was on page 12. There's the cartoon, it was enlarged and made clearer and that's where it was. Okay, so that's SA Media, which would be very handy then again in political governance. Maybe you want to go and search, if you're a National Agricultural Science student, you want to search for droughts, floods, uh, disaster management, whatever it is that you need. So again, at ESA, I just want to make you aware of SAGE research methods. We have access to this, and this is a very handy tool when you go and research. Find information on research methods like qualitative, quantitative, mixed methods research. You could type a keyword in there. You can go the advanced route. You can learn about different methods. Everywhere where you see locks, we do not have access to. But there's a nice project planner to design your whole research project, project from scratch. Um, there's podcasts to listen to because students get a fright the minute they hear research. So let's just go political research and see what it comes up with. It gives you some autocomplete. You don't have to. You can just go that way and say search. It opens this. It even makes a mind map. This tool is extremely handy, I have to tell you. You can go and refine content type there in the right inside the discipline, whatever, but this tells you this is from there and everything it picked up from your words, it highlights for you. 
This is also very handy encyclopedia. You can go, it allows you to download certain pages. What I want to show you, I'm just going to open this one. These your different approaches. You see these the methods map, the mind map I was talking about. I'm just going to select a random, look there's Atlas T. I'm going to select a random one. Because what I want to show you is if you're going to download this section, you see you can download the PDF. Please make sure you select page numbers. So if you download it, it's going to show you the different page numbers as if you had the book, because you're going to need those if you're referencing in Harvard or direct quotes, okay, if you're using APA. Make sure that's selected, because if you don't you download that, there's not going to be any page numbers. You're going to have to go back and go search it again. All right. So that was quite a handy tool, the research methods. So that, people, are the basics of the databases in a nutshell. So this is the last section of your orientation where I'm just going to give you some basic details and take you through it. Remember I told you about the logging in of campus at the beginning when asked for the Microsoft login at your student number at ufs.ac.za and your Blackboard password. Your normal login when you saw my second login where it took my name, it's your student number and your Blackboard password. Just some library basics that you need to know. PhD and master students are allowed 15 books for one month. That's if you're based in Bloemfontein, all right? Remember at school, but that was very long ago for me. I think it was two books for two weeks or something. Postal users are students that are not based in Bloemfontein, okay? That would be 20 books for six weeks. You are allowed to renew these books twice from home before they need to be in the library, all right? We will recall them if we really need it. If it's a crisis, it doesn't happen often. But again, you mail me, tell me, look, I'm so busy with these books, can you renew? But please, when you correspond with me, give me your student number, that makes a big difference, okay? I've told you about the reference letter that allows you to use another facility in the town where you live. I've told you about interlibrary loans, and I'm going to present you now a postgrad research unit. That's where the two research librarians are based. We are there for the masters and the doctorate students. We have this whole special unit where you can go and sit inside and work when you come to campus. These are some photos from the unit. We have standalone desktops, a section where you can sit and work. We have where you can sit with your laptop and work with a Wi-Fi. If you look in the back there, there are discussion rooms. I would not recommend more than four students in there, although two is a better number. Okay, those rooms aren't huge. It's an academic library. It is not loud or noisy. Maybe you need to Skype with somebody quickly. You can borrow one of those rooms. All right. This was one of my old students sitting with a laptop at the laptop area. So what do we find in the research unit? We're two very hardworking research librarians. I told you about the workstations with the computers and the Wi-Fi area. I've told you about the discussion rooms. There's links if you ask us. Endless links, tips, hints to help you and guide you on your research path, okay? It's there to assist you, the researcher. We have on tap boiling hot water for coffee, tea, cup of soup. You bring your own coffee. We have cold water for those who are very thirsty. We have a microwave, we have a fridge. All right, you are allowed to use those facilities. We are not going to chase you out if you sit and eat or drink there. You are not going to miss, you're going to be tidy. But now I have to warn you, if the librarian can smell it, you have to share. So no Kentucky or that thing. Bring your Kentucky, but remember if we, sm if we smell it, you're going to share. All right, and then there are my contact details. I want to wish you well on this path you're going, and please feel free, phone me, email me. We take it from there. Wishing you luck on your journey forward. Thank you.